Welcome to Lost Culture, your one-stop destination for everything pop culture. My name is Aston, and I'll be your host for today's episode of Lost Movie News. Now, before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share so your friends can see. And as always, let's jump right into the show. Now, our first story of the day is Skyscraper. So, if you don't know, Skyscraper is the, um, the new film that's featuring the artist formerly known as The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. So... Dwayne Johnson basically came to his Instagram to give us some little information on his new um, endeavor into the film industry. So, with this film, is due out July 13, 2018, and it's going to be between Universal slash Legendary. They're going to be bringing this film to theaters near you. And the premise of this film is, though, you know, like we've seen The Rock fight, earth, I mean, earthquakes, wrestlers, and this time he's going out to fight a building. So, yeah. He's fighting a building. So this time, he's basically playing a disabled vet who's um, an FBI, um, also like a former FBI hostage negotiator. And basically, his wife and family is all stranded on top of the like, on top of a skyscraper. And at the same time, the skyscraper is on fire. So he has to fight his way up 31 floors. To reach his family and basically make it back down for the building like explodes or like, implode implodes. So yeah, this is this is what's going on. Like I, <laughs> the crazy part about this, like even though it sounds outrageous, it might work because we've seen in San Andreas he basically fight an earthquake. Um, we know he's going to be fighting monsters in his new rampage film. Is there anything The Rock is not willing to fight, honestly? Like, is there anything? And even though the story for um, San Andreas might not have been the strongest, the special effects is what saved the film. And that's what I'm assuming is going to happen the same way for Skyscraper. This is going to be a popcorn movie. Yes, like I said, he's mentioned the fact that he's going to be a disabled vet, FBI, negotiator. So it's going to be crazy to see how this actually works out. Obviously, it's going to be a big popcorn film. Um, it's going to be just release yourself from reality type film just to see like what man what one man is willing to do to protect his family and honestly this is what the rock like this is where he shines at this, this is where he shines at this or action movies with humor so this is where the rock this is it's obviously going to make um, like a little bit of money it's obviously going to do good this has the, the rock it's there's not too much he can't do, like honestly, as of right now, except for that Hercules film. But besides that, he's still gonna do pretty good. This movie's gonna be good. I don't know if it's gonna be good, but it's gonna be okay. It's definitely the special effects are gonna be great, and I can't wait to see how it actually turns out. And that's really all we have for that story. Moving on to our next story of the day, we have Guardians of the Galaxy. So Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is a go, and this isn't a surprise to anyone because Volume Two, we all know, was a go. Like me. It was a no-brainer. Volume two, like after like, volume one was a hit, so they, they greenlit volume two. I think a week afterwards, and now volume two has even hit theaters, and volume three is already coming out. Now the thing that has me surprised is the fact that James Gunn doesn't know if he's actually going to return yet, and that makes sense. You now I know a lot of people um, who think directors shouldn't stick to one franchise for too long, and it makes sense. Like we see James Gunn he did the first one. He um he writ he wrote and directed the first one. He wrote and directed the second one. Now we're moving on to the third one. Now he's trying to think like, do I actually want to dedicate three years of my life to this film again, like to the Marvel universe? And I understand like, even like once he's done directing the film, he's still not done. With it. He has to like market the film. He has to promote the film. He has to do all of this, and he doesn't know if he wants to be stuck into another three year contract with Marvel. And it's it's understandable. He had a great run while he did. Volume 1 is amazing. Um, volume 2 looks amazing so far. I haven't had a chance to see it. But like, once May 5th get here, it can't come soon enough. Like I'm excited to see this film. Now, the question is, what is going to happen for James Gunn? What is going to have to happen for James Gunn to come back? Um, he's made a buttload of money on these first two. Maybe if they up the ante, give him a little bit more money. Um, he basically has free reign, it seems like. He had he negotiated to bring in a couple characters. So it obviously seems like there's not too many characters that Marvel, like it's not too much that Marvel won't let him do. Like we see, yeah, it, I'm just excited. I, I'm just excited Volume 3 is greenlit. I definitely want to see 
how volume three will turn out after Infinity Wars. Because we all know right now all the the majority of the Guardians are in uh, Infinity Wars. So I'd love to see how all the events that um that happen in Infinity Wars, how that spins out and how it affect the volume three of Guardians. That's the biggest thing for me, how that's gonna affect the rest of the Marvel Universe. Now like I said, I'm excited for Volume 3. I can't wait for Volume 2 to hit theaters on May 5th. So, I just want to know who they consider bringing in as the um, the new director slash writer. And what are their plans for the next film? So, going on from there, we have Suicide Squad 2. So, Suicide Squad 2 has basically announced their new writer. And it's going to be Adam Kozard. And you know who Adam Kozar, he's the man responsible for pinning Tarzan, um, Jack Ryan, a shadow recruit. And more recently, he actually um, pinned the new underwater film. I think it's um, Christian Stewart, um, a couple other people in the chat. I can't remember everybody off, of my, off the top of my head. TJ, um, I forgot his name. He's going to be in there. So we had a couple people definitely going to be in there. Now, the biggest thing about Suicide Squad 2, it doesn't have a director yet. We don't know who all even going to be in the film because at the end of spoilers, at the end of Suicide Squad one, we know that Harley Quinn escaped. We know, um, yeah, we know like Dan Shot kind of gets his like um, his little free days or whatever to go do whatever. So I'm trying to figure out how this is going to work. Um, then I think Diablo died in Suicide Squad, so there's definitely going to. I'm trying to figure out who are going to be the new um, the new team in Suicide Squad too. You know, if anybody knows anything about Suicide Squad, this team is always in a steady rotation because, like I said, people die, people um, break loose. I'd love to see how this turns out, how this new Suicide Squad is going to be because it got Captain Boomerang. Yeah, it's, I'd love to see how this team is going to turn out and who's going to direct it. Everyone knows right now that DC is trying their hardest to get Mel Gibson on board to actually like direct this film i don't know if that's going to work if that's going to be the best strategy but there's no telling like i just want to know how this is going to turn out how it's going to affect we know david ayers is leaving he's going to go do his um gotham sirens i don't know if they're going to give him free reigns because we've seen warner brothers is not the type of theater well for the dc films anyway they're not the type to let the people just go and have free range with their film. They're definitely going to be involved. They're definitely going to do some last minute changes. And they're definitely, and they might even call a new director in. We never know. So like Warner Brothers in DC, uh, I, just don't, uh, I don't know how this is going to work. Um, it definitely has to be an improvement above, uh, uh, upon Suicide Squad 2. There were some redeemable features for, um, for Suicide Squad, like the character designs, um, Harley Quinn was one. So and like they're losing some of their biggest they're losing one of their biggest shots, like or one of their biggest characters for Suicide Squad. So if Suicide Squad Side Squad 2 is it gonna have Harley Quinn, I don't know how well it's gonna be received because that was one of the most redeemable features or um, parts of Suicide Squad one. So that's a big like that like my big caution sign right there is no Harley Quinn, how that's gonna work. Um David Ayers, I don't really mind that having David Ayers because we know at the at the end of the day, David Ayers didn't even cut together the um, Suicide Squad we actually seen in theaters. So that part doesn't really affect me at all. But the absence of Harley Quinn, um, that's going to be a big one, a big role for them to fill. I don't know who they're going to bring into that role, but yeah, it's going to be a hard one. Going on from there, we have Beauty. Uh, well, yeah, we have Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is going to take up a couple of things today. So. What are we gonna do for opening this week? We have Beauty and the Beast. Now this film is predicted to break records this weekend, and I'm definitely gonna see it this weekend. I'm definitely gonna do a review for it. Um, I don't know who else is gonna do be on there with me. They're working on some things for our movie reviews to actually have multiple people on there to so get multiple point of views, and we're gonna see how that turns out. Now going on, going on from there, I'm excited for this. You know, Beauty and the Beast is going to be. We're going a little bit a little turmoil right now. And I actually appalled, like I appalled, like um, I applied Disney for what they're doing right now. Cause I, like I said, when I first announced Beauty and the Beast for um for having their first um like out, out gay character, I, I applied them for that. I like to see inclusion. Um it's a big thing in part of the world right now. Like not a big thing, but it's part of the world we live in today. There's no point in um like 
tiptoeing around it or not not having these characters just because um, you're going to have like backlash against it. it every like, good idea had backlash at some point. So it makes sense for them to, like, to keep like, trekking forward and doing what they're going to do. Now, with that being said, or say, like, like I said, this is going to take up a couple stories. Beauty and the Beast is refusing to do a new cut for like for countries or areas that are um, that are um, anti-gay. So now going against that, like we see Malaysia basically said, "Oh, we we approved this film upon one request, and that's that to cut out all the um, all the homosexual scenes from the Beauty and the Beast." Which I thought like mm, it's, it's not that serious. Like it's really not that serious. Um, I'm glad Disney refused to do it, so they're gonna lose money by not like having their film in Malaysia. We've seen even they had trouble in Russia, where Russia was trying to pass some laws where they can't watch this film. And now we see like Russia got over it. Russia said, "Oh, Beauty and the Beast is still gonna be played here," so they got over that um, over that hump. And now even in America, we have a um, a drive-in in Alabama. I hate reporting stories like this, where like the owner basically said. They're not. Um, they're not going to play Beauty and the Beast because they feel like they can't take their eleven-year-old granddaughter, or their eight-year-old grandson, to the theater because of this homosexual scene, and they feel like if God cannot watch this film with them, then this film has no place in their theater. And I feel like, I, I feel like they're a big hypocrite. Like I'm pretty sure they're playing like action films where they're just killing. If, if I remember correctly. Um, Killing is one of the ten, um, like, not to kill is one of the ten um, commandments. Like, you cannot kill. So, if they have no problem with people killing, like, with killing, why is it such a, a big issue for that, like, homosexual scene? Is killing, um, I don't learn that, I almost, I'm going to choose my words correctly. Like, I feel like killing is worse than being able to choose who you want to love. I feel like there's no issue with choosing who you want to love, it being male, female, like, regardless, um... I feel like if love is love, so I don't feel like I feel like murder, like the loud murder into your movie theaters is okay. But when it comes to someone having like free choice of who they love, it's an issue, which is a big thing to me. Like, I think that's I think that's very bad. I, I think I I think that's very hypocritical for someone to, to come to say something like that. Like, oh, I can't watch this film with God, but you can go watch Terminator where he's just killing any and everybody. And it's okay. You can watch um, John Wick where he's like, yeah, like it's uh, that's it's just so crazy to me that like, like some people there's still people out there like this that would do something like that. Like, but that's really all I had to say on that story. And yeah, um, moving on to our next story is Thor three. So Chris Hemsworth, he's out um, doing a promotion um doing a promotional tour. He's actually. I think it was with THR he did an interview with. He was talking about not being um, involved in Captain America. He actually thought him not being involved in Captain America meant he was fired, which is understandable because Captain America uh, had everybody in it. If you don't know which Captain America I'm talking about, I'm talking about Captain America Civil War. Captain America Civil War had everybody in it. And there was one point where the Hulk was like, was supposed to be in the film. We remember um, Robert Downey Jr. was talking. He actually told um, he actually told him like he actually came out and said like yeah the Hulk is going to be in the film. He's um, he's he's here like that's why I was like um, that's why I've been like when he wasn't in the film, him or Thor wasn't in the film. They weren't even mentioned. I think they were mentioned like once or twice like we're Thor. Like, but besides that. I don't know, like it's crazy, and honestly, if Thor was on one of those teams, it would have been like he'd have been OP. That team would have been OP. Right now, we just have mortals fighting, and if Thor being on one of those teams would have been OP. But he said Disney sat him down and basically told him him and he his position was fine. They just couldn't include him and the um, the Hulk in this film because they had an idea for a Thor and Hulk buddy film that would not have worked if they would have been in Civil War, which is a very understandable. Like, I understand, like, I understand that completely. And we see he's actually the only Avenger in um, Doctor Strange. So him not being in this film is not like, it, yes, I, I did miss Thor in the Civil War. I would love to see him and Hulk. I do a nice little, they haven't even had to have been on opposite teams. I think Disney knew that. Like, 
Thor and Hulk would have had to have been on separate teams for that movie to work. And with them just being out of the picture completely, they were able to go do this buddy film with them. And I'm glad they made that decision. I'm glad they went to see um, Planet Hulk. Who's not excited about Planet Hulk actually coming to theaters? There's no one who's not excited about that. Now, I'm glad to see him where he was talking about it. Like, yeah, I, I just felt like I might have been getting cut out. Like, I'm glad to see like the humility in there like he's actually like honestly speak about being afraid of losing his role or something like that you know we got some people talking about like chris evans finally came out and said avengers um two or well, avengers two infinity wars and avengers four are basically going to be his last outing as captain america uh, i don't know if that means sebastian stan is going to be stamp um, stepping up or if anthony mackie is going to be stepping up as captain america we don't know how um what that means as of yet but I'd like to see either one of those two um, step up. And if, you know what I'm talking about. There's presidents for both of them, both being Captain America. And at the same time, a different time, both of them has carried that manual, um, that um, mantle before. So I would definitely see like, Anthony Mackie step up or Sebastian Stan. Um, the way it's looking, though, it seems like it's really more of a Sebastian Stan stepping up for Captain America at the time comes. I don't know how I got to Captain America, but, um, but yes, I'd love to see how that turns out. Now, moving on to our next story of the dump, our next segment of the day is going to be buy and sell. So for buy and sell, we have, um, <clears throat> we have Eddie Redman be voicing a character in Early Man. Now, I've seen this teaser and I really enjoyed it. I'm not the biggest fan of the stop motion, but I really did like to see it. We see he's doing the cast um, by Macy Williams. He's being directed by Artman. And... And um, Eddie Rittman is actually speaking with Entertainment Weekly when he is saying that our, this is actually Armin's biggest adventure film yet. And what can I say? I'm not the, like I said, I'm not the biggest um, stop art fan, uh, fan, like I'm the stop motion film fan. So for me, this doesn't really affect me. Um, yeah, I'm just not the biggest fan. So I I, I hate like a down song, but I love, I, like, I love Eddie Red, man. I love Macy Williams in Game of Thrones. I haven't seen her too much outside of it. I've seen her in iBoy, but I just don't feel like that was enough for her like, to really direct herself. She was playing more like, like a rape victim, so she was like, in her room a lot. She was, But I definitely I liked her in that film, but I think it wasn't the best portrayal of her acting ability. Now, moving on, like, I'm definitely going to... I'm going to buy it on the fact that it is going to be Armin's biggest adventure. I love the voice cast, so I can't say anything about that. But moving on to our next story of the day, we have the Megan Levy film. And this is going to be, um, Kate, she's going to be starring Kate Mora. We see Commons actually in this film. And this trailer I actually enjoyed. I found myself enjoyed. I'm not the biggest, um... Uh, what? We have a lot of we had a lot of dog movies come out. We had Max about the um about the army dog come out a year or two ago. We had Dogs Purpose <laughs> come in and like what that, that tragedy came out a couple um about a couple months ago. And now we're on to another dog um, like dog film, buddy film. And this one took a like I actually like seeing this. I love seeing um K Moore. She actually played that um that. That role well. Like, I love to see how she's like interpersonal. Her interpersonal skills are that's really all she has. She, she's not really a people person. She's all about herself. Um, the intro. She played an introvert well. I love seeing like she was very like intro. Yeah, her introvert. She played that role very well. I love seeing the fact that she's bonding with the dog, and we see that bond actually growing up. Like that, that growing up, but getting stronger, bigger, and we see how she like starts off afraid of the dog. The dog has anger management problems and everything. And they actually heal each other. She, um, he makes her more of an introvert. She's able to communicate with people more. Um, we see the dog is more friendly. He's actually um, helping other people. And I'm glad to see that. And we see how she has this bond with this dog. And we see a lot of people are like, oh, the dog need a break. After we, then we zoom out and we see how many IEDs he actually found out there in the, out there in the desert. We see all the red flags. We see he... Um, and it's sad when we see these two were injured in that explosion with the vehicle coming up. And I had to buy this trailer. I really did enjoy it. I don't mean to give you a full breakdown of the trailer, but I did enjoy this trailer. And we see once, basically the synopsis is this, this uh, Marine, she's an introvert. She meets his dog. She's partnered with a dog. Her bond grows strong with it. And due to a 
like uh, this is based on a true story, by the way. Due to an accident, an explosion, they're separated. She's discharged. We see um, the dog is injured, and he's basically going to be put down. And what she does is she goes out and does this big campaign. She goes see her government and everything to get the dog's status changed so she can adapt, actually adopt him. She does not want to give up on the dog. The dog saves her life. She saved a lot of his, her comrades' lives. And she's not going to give up on this dog and let this dog go, um, go without a fight. And I'm glad to see that. So I'm going to buy this trailer. Moving on to our next trailer, we have more Game of Thrones actors. So this one is called Voice. This is going to be more of a um a thriller slash I don't know. It's going to be. It's definitely going to be a thriller. It's definitely going to have some um some horror aspects to it. And we see Amelia Clark is going to be playing a um a guardian to a young kid who lost his mom. And this trailer is very creepy. I like. I definitely enjoy. I, I definitely felt myself on the edge of my seat a couple times in here. We see like the oh, we see like the image of the young boy on top of the tower getting ready to jump, and she rushes up there. He's like hiding, getting ready to push her. Like, yeah. Um, Amelia Clark. I love the way her makeup is in this film. Um, I'm hoping this film is better than Terminator Genesis. I wasn't the biggest fan of that film, but I'm hoping it's better. What else do we got? Um, this is definitely a. Um, this is definitely like her adventuring away from her um, da Daenerys role. Um, we see she's a lot more vulnerable in this film. She actually breaks down. She's she wants to leave. Ooh, even when like the spooky part, like when she's just laying inside the tomb and he's like patching it, getting ready to seal it. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> This, this is a really spooky trailer I'm definitely going to go check out. So this is a buy for me. And with that being said, it's the end of our show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, this is Lost Culture. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share so your friends can see. Let me know your opinions on these, um, on these trailers, on any of the stories down in the comment sections. We can always have a conversation down there. And if you have any movie questions, you can always tweet us. Our, um, you can tweet us your questions. Our, our handles is inside the is inside the comment section. Lost Culture underscore TV is where you can Lost underscore Culture TV is where you can find us on Twitter and go ahead and tweet us your questions. We answer them here on the stream. As always, thank you guys for tuning in.